Welcome back to the Brewbot development series. Last episode, we programmed some basic character movement onto our weird evil cylinder thing. And today, I want to turn that evil cylinder into Brewbot and get some animations working. Yeah, this episode I want to start with making some animations and even making some changes to the Brewbot model. I think it needs to be more short and I think he needs to be a little bit lower quality. Yeah, I want him to be like generally shorter. That's not how you do it necessarily. As strange as the prototype Brewbot looked, the proportions being slightly more squished felt like an improvement. So I'll go ahead and rescale the character a bit here in Blender, making his body and limbs shorter and adjusting everything else back into place. The next thing I want to do is get rid of his eyes, because they're too high quality compared to the rest of the model. Instead of having geometry here, we're going to grab a render of his eye and project that onto a flat plane. This eye image needed to be redone a couple times to get the lighting right, and it only got better after making a normal and emissive map for it. So, uh, I think now I can rig him again. I think I like how this looks. Yeah, I've got to set all the bones up again. But this is a great opportunity to try using bendy bones for his arms and legs instead of a bunch of individual bone segments. So I enabled the bendy bones, and they seem to be behaving properly. I painted the weights on like usual and tried out this new setup. I think that's a keyframe of walking. <laughs> or aerobics. We just make sure that that is over here. I mean, <laughs> I mean, if he's like a wind-up toy in the background of a cutscene where he's in a reflection, then that looks pretty good. I think it's safe to say I'm still in my animation learning journey, but this will do. Now we can drag the newly exported model into the project, and it'll import it with all of its new animations. Which looks a bit wrong. His blender bendy bone arms aren't bent. His stupid noodle arms broke. So yeah. It looks like maybe bendy bones don't work. Yep, bendy bones only work in Blender. So now we've got to go through and turn those into non-bendy bones, which have enough segments to act bendy in a way that works in Godot, which means even more intricate and annoying weight painting than before. But now that it's done, we have something that works just as good in Blender and should work way better in Godot. But unfortunately, we need to remake that walking animation, which started turning into more of a sprint animation. So I just went with it and animated his arms flailing behind it. This looks pretty good, but I have to figure out how to import both a walking and running animation in one model. After some research, I found that you can manage your animations in the action editor menu. So now I can use a separate animation slot for the walking animation. After T-posing him, I started trying to figure out how walking works. It sounds like something that you would just understand, but no, I almost had to look it up. But I didn't. I'm not looking up how walking works. That's where I draw the line. Now we can import this stuff and give it a try. Oh, I see two animations. Heck yeah. <laughs> so if I wanted, I could open Brewbot Legacy as a scene, and I have the original in case I want to add him as an easter egg or something. Anyways, let's get rid of all of this. What if I just drag this into this? Okay, so he's not in the right orientation at all. So the main thing is that his feet should be at the bottom of this. That way he stands on the floor and doesn't go through it or stand above it. Okay, get me out of here. Ah! Perspective. Okay, jeez, okay. Let's try it. Global position <laughs> on type of null instance. Yeah, I don't think people are making a null instance object too often. Uh, it's because this is called Brewbot 2 now. If I try again. Okay. Hey! That's not so bad. The rings around the eyes are not. I don't know why they're emissive like that. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> so let's try to get those animations playing now. So I looked up how to play an animation and got that line of code implemented in my player script. Oh, like okay, he's like Terminator. <laughs> okay, uh, and he doesn't have an idle animation to play when you're standing still. So let's get the other animation playing then under the other circumstances. So if sprint equals true, lay parentheses sprint. And how do I tell it that it has more priority? I could I can do that if if they start fighting. 
So I think they're I think they're fighting right there. I think that's what's going on. So we will put this in another if statement that is called if not sprinting. So you only walk if you're not sprinting. Yes! Wow. Getting these animations working here has been way easier than it was in Unreal Engine, but the effect it has on the scene is just the same. Now that we've got animations, this feels significantly less like a test and more like a video game. The next thing I wanted to do was make the player speed tied to how far you're pushing the joystick. That way you can walk slowly. Is it because it's normalized? Oh yeah, 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 I can slow down now. I can even slowly sprint. What? Where's Sprint? Where did the... what? Did it not get saved because it wasn't like... Didn't have the shield on it or whatever? Blender. Well, there goes that cool Sprint animation. Sure, I can re-import the exported model, but the animation keyframes are all weird and hard to work with. And there weren't any good backups or autosaves either. So, now I can go... Make a new one called Sprint. And then I can close it. I can open it here and make sure to protect it from the incoming Blender apocalypse when I close the software. Even though I saved, but animations don't get saved. You don't want your animation, right? It's moments like these that you need to remind yourself that Blender is a free software, and therefore you aren't really in the position to nitpick. But holy crap, that's maybe the stupidest thing ever. So here goes another 20 minutes animating something I've already animated before. Granted, it should turn out slightly better this time, since I have gained a few points of XP since earlier. I would say that looks pretty good. Now is a good time to like try to fix some stuff about like the fact that when I import him, his eye, the whole eye thing glows. Even in the pitch darkness, his eyes are still fully emissive. Turns out the issue there was that I was exporting without a black background, so the background must have defaulted to white, because now it works as intended. Now I can make the idle animation so he doesn't just pause his walking when you stand still. After importing the model, I noticed there was some weird shading going on, so I re-exported and made sure to check the Apply Modifiers box this time. This applied the shading properly, and the idle animation is in here too now, so let's get it plugged into the script. Let's play idle. Okay, let's see if that works. Yeah, yeah. I even tied the walk animation speed to the movement speed, which looks pretty good. I love those kinds of small, easy changes that end up making a big visual difference. And to make sure you can't slowly sprint, I put a speed limit that you need to stay above to start sprinting or stay sprinting. So now, while holding the sprint button, you also need to hold the stick all the way forward to be sprinting. Along with these little bonus features, there's a big handful of bugs that I need to fix. <laughs> Oh, you can sprint while diving. That's interesting. It kind of gets you out of the sprint, out of the dive faster. See that? Yes, I'm inventing speedrunning strats out of these glitches instead of fixing them. But how else can I address the issue if I don't fully understand it? But for real though, some of these glitches could end up coming back as polished features. You never know. Now that we've made some significant changes, I'll update my project in the GitHub version control, which is something I set up not long ago, and could end up being a real lifesaver. The next thing I want to tackle is the introduction of a state machine to my player script. I would explain what that means, but I'm not sure I know either. So, okay, I basically... I had some kind of an idea with this whole state thing. Um, the main issue was making it a, a string when I should have made it an enumerator. I looked at a tutorial on this a little bit, like a website tutorial. I was starting to understand it, I think. Basically, the idea is I have all of these like booleans that I need to keep everywhere, like sprinting, sliding, diving. And I need to, for every single time I want to activate like a, a jump or something like that, or like a dive, I need to check like everything every time I want to do anything and um, creates like a web that's really not that nice. So the better thing to do would be to just simply check if I'm in the right state. And then I can have all of the, basically the state machine, I can have separately in its own function. Enum. So I, was th I had a few ideas of how I might do this. One of them is to just basically comment the whole script out and rebuild it. 
and the other is to like patchwork everything. The thing about patchworking it is I'm worried I'll miss things and it'll start to become a mess and I won't know what stuff I've fixed and what stuff I haven't fixed. So part of me is thinking rebuilding it from the ground up will be cleaner and easier to make sure everything runs smoothly. Smooth, smooth, runs smooth, smooth. While I wasn't able to figure out that basic bit of English, I did get the movement conditions commented out. Now I can go back to that website I found and read through the specifics of how you set this thing up. The main issue with my previous system was that I had to change almost every ability's code each time I wanted to make a new ability. It was creating a confusing web of dependencies and conditions that I'd rather not be working in. With this system, I can at least keep those changing conditions separate and more manageable. So I've got to set up the state machine process that will get the states in and process them, which made me realize I had been setting the whole thing up backwards. Okay, the way they have it set up is not how I would set it up. They have it backwards where they're checking for states. Oh man, I might have set it up backwards. Luckily, that just meant moving everything up in the physics process down to the state process. So that's where you have the information needed to make the states perform their actions properly within their own contexts. And then physics process is where we get the physics things that are happening and tell it what state it should be in based off of what's happening every frame. And then this is where it uses that information to, to make the, to drive the characters movement and actions. So the physics process will be checking if the player should be in this state or that state, and state process will change properties and perform actions, like animations, while the player is in those states. Although I did find that there were some times it made more sense to move part of a function out of state process and just do it in physics process when changing the state. But as you can see, the sprint is pretty darn screwed up. That's going to happen to most of these animations, because I'm having to set them all up again and declare conditions that don't overlap. And in this case, the walk and sprint states are constantly replacing each other, because they're both able to be true at the same time. Yep, now the animation works because I'm not randomly every frame having to walk and then resprint. States dot crouching. Hmm. So this is saying if you're not moving, you should be idle, but that's not true. If state not equal, not equal states dot crouching. And there might be other situations where you're standing still, but you're not idle. But crouching is the only one I can think of right now. Yeah, it high jumps now. What is that bump? Something's going wrong. Oh, I can let go of sprint and bad things begin to happen. Wait, am I returning to the eye animation though from like walking? I'm just not doing the eye animation. It's him getting set to walking super fast. When I crouch, I start walking. I'm so confused. Wait, what is this? Oh my gosh. There's a line here that just asks if you're not holding sprint, then you must be walking. Now I'm idle. Okay. And does the sprinting thing still work? Yes. Okay. I'm getting this I'm getting this back together. I hate to show me redoing things so much. It feels like I've done this same part like four times this series. But hopefully, we're getting closer to a system that I can trust to not get in the way while we work on more exciting stuff. Now we need to set the diving back up again, which, unsurprisingly, was not fun or easy. Let's see if I miraculously did this first try. Well, I did mess with some stuff. The heck? It's making me so mad. No, this shouldn't be else. Hmm. That, that pretty much fixed it. <laughs> that should fix it. No? That fixed it. Well, it didn't, obviously it didn't fix it. It's okay, it's generally working way better now. There's just, there's just that going on. It's because I'm trying to face the floor while I'm in the air. Okay. Yeah, that got rid of that weirdness. 
I continued stripping away the layers of weirdness until it felt like it was getting closer to what I had before. But this time, it should be way more simple and stable, since I won't be rotating my character. Instead, I'll just play an animation where Brewbot dives, but the actual player movement node will keep its orientation. So let's whip that dive animation up real quick. I'm gonna need him to rotate forward and then move forward. Then I can pose his arms and legs to make this motion look more convincing. This retrofitting of arm and leg poses to match root motion has worked really well for me so far. And just like that, we have a decent dive animation. Now for a very simple slide animation. This only needs to be something like 10 frames. Just a fast repeating jittering animation to tell you you're sliding along a surface. Then I'll make a standing up animation to get up out of the slide. I started with a keyframe from the slide animation and ended on a keyframe from the idle animation. Then I smooth out the transition a bit and animate the arms and legs to help make the animation make more sense. Cool, these should work. Let's check them out in Godot. If I open them up, <laughs> all right. We should have some different animations. Let's try some of these. Dive, so I'm not sure what's gonna happen there. Okay. Okay, is that what walking looks like now? Yep. Alt R. Let's try that again. Yes. Okay. I think it's too slow. That's 0.75. And that'll retime it. Yeah, definitely faster. The really nice thing about having animations is that I have something to time events with. So now I can tell it to enter the sliding state once the dive animation is finished and I'm on the floor. I went ahead and made another animation, which transitions between the end of the dive and the start of the slide. This animation will play as soon as he hits the ground and blend into the looping slide animation, which was very easy to implement and I think looks pretty good. Another thing I did was make the dive happen from the direction of the camera when there's no movement input, which I think feels better. Uh, I just have a couple more animations now. One more, slow fall. I think that's pretty much it. There's a few bug fixes that I can attempt, but I'm not gonna spend forever on them. So let's make the slow fall animation. I want the handle to spin 360 degrees every cycle of the animation. So I keyframed 180 halfway and another 180 from there at the end frame. Now we have a spinning handle. Once we add some animations to the arms, we should be good to go. And unfortunately, I wasn't paying attention and my hard drive filled up. So the screen recording stopped before I added a few more animations. So fast forward a little bit and we have this new slow fall animation, plus crouching, crouch idle, and crouch stand animations, as well as jump and high jump animations and a landing animation. And I think that's gonna do it for this episode in the Brewbot development series. Now that we've got the movement working pretty nicely, I think it's time to take on the combat system. It'll be very exciting working on something completely different. I'm really looking forward to it. Anyways, I'll talk to you next time. Thanks.